On 7th of April 2024, the board of Legia Warsaw decided to shake up the Polish football scene once more. Following a slightly embarrassing exit from the Conference League against Norwegian side Molde in the knockout playoffs and the title dreams fading away, the manager Kosta Runjajic was shown the doors. This immediately sparked out the discussion about who is going to take charge of the club, which ended up in signing a rather unusual name. We're talking about the student of Jose Mourinho, yes this is correct, a Portuguese man who came to Poland in search of managerial success in football, Gonzalo Feo. Who? Gonzalo Feo. Who? Let's talk about him. To be honest, I could just tell you that Gonzalo Feu actually has a relatively successful career for his age on the Polish football scene. He was a part of staff in very reputable teams, such as Benfica, Legia Warsaw, Wisła Kraków or Raków Częstochowa, mainly in youth teams or as an analyst. Gonzalo then got his first chance as a manager in Motor Lublin. When he joined, the team was dead last in the third tier, but Gonzalo turned it around and guided Motor to the promotion playoffs which the team won in the same season. In the second tier of the Polish game, the man from Portugal was on the way to lead Motor to yet another promotion, which later on happened via the playoffs again, just not with Gonzalo, who moved to Legia Warsaw with around 10 games to go. Legia called Feo up while going through a crisis and the title chances fading away. Gonzalo did not win the title for the team, but still had the team finish third, which was enough for conference league qualifiers. He later converted that to qualifying for the league stage, which starts this Thursday. Pretty successful for a 34 year old, isn't it? I mean, it's not world class, but it's definitely something. Well, that's just the tip of the iceberg. I'm not denying Feo's abilities as a coach. What he is great at is taking over the dressing room and making the players fight and get results on the pitch for him, as well as the supporters. There are also anecdotes of Gonzalo being a literal workhorse or analyzing set pieces for days. He's also the man who helped Rakov sign Ivi Lopez, who later on became an absolute star of the league. But under the shell of a talented gaffer, there are a lot of scandals hidden. This sounded way too dramatic. <laughs> Following a series of bad results, Gonzalo Feo is very close to getting sacked by Legia. The club is only 7th in the table and we're talking about the biggest team in Poland. In this video, we will go through every conflict, every scandal, every... Let's just name it Feo moment. Moment when Gonzalo, or someone around Gonzalo's nerves and frustration, took over and led to some bad actions from the oldest to the newest. Starting at the University of Lisbon. I recently found an anecdote saying that Gonzalo Feo, as a freshman student, tried to convince Jose Mourinho that Jose should sign Gonzalo as a part of his staff. I'm not sure if this is real. If anyone can verify that, let me know in the comments. Here's the source. And I'm not taking a laugh because that's just a hell lot of ambition. But we're starting, for real this time, in Legia Warsaw, with another small of those anecdotes. Basically, in October 2015, Stanislav Czerzesov was appointed as a first team manager. He later guided the team to a domestic double. But right after Stanislav getting appointed, Feo stomped into the chairman's room very frustrated, nearly begging for a chance to become a manager. Needless to say, Feo quickly left the club after that incident. He was an analyst, by the way. In Wisła Kraków, Gonzalo forgot to bring his entry card, but still tried to get inside the VIP lounge, where a post-match meeting was held. That game was a match between Wisła and Piaskiewice in 2017, 1-0 by the hosts. Because he lacked that entry card, he wasn't let in, so he forced his way through by pushing away one security member and when leaving, spat on another. Gonzalo was penalized by the club, but only left at the beginning of January 2018. In Raków Częstochowa, Gonzalo was an assistant for Marek Papsion, who you may already know has gone with Raków from the third tier to winning the league title in 2023. Fey was involved in two fights while in the club, both in the year 2022. One of them was after the Polish Cup final against Lech Poznań. One of those fights nearly happened. The reason stays unknown, at least I couldn't find anything. The would-be opponent was Maciej Palczewski, who was a goalkeeping coach for Lech. The fight was stopped before it even started thanks to quick reaction by the other staff members of Raków. And it's great news for Gonzalo. Just look at this photograph to know why. The second fight did actually happen, in a rather unusual place. The coaching staff of Raków was playing a little game between each other, during which Gonzalo decided to have a fight with a team manager Kamil Waskowski. The reason was if the ball did go out of the pitch before the goal was scored. The fight ended with Gonzalo's loss, both of the battle and the job. Pretty crazy how the real story went out two years after. On September 2022, Gonzalo joined Motor Lublin. Although the results were great, there is a dark day in the Polish football universe. 5th of March 2023. Motor played GKS Jastrzębie on a snowy day and went on to win the home game to one. But that did not really matter because Gonzalo went on to shine once more. On the same day, 
Two huge incidents happened. First of which involved Paulina Maciąże working in public relations for the club. This wasn't the first time Gonzalo had a problem towards her using words and phrases that are heavily offensive, and even though we don't know the exact words, I would rather not use them. But this time, it was too little too much, especially considering what happened after the game. Gonzalo was in open conflict with the chairman Paweł Tomczyk. This conflict was rising for months, starting with a little I'm on the same line as the chairman. In February 2023, Gonzalo posted a video on his own YouTube channel claiming the City Sports Center is sabotaging the club. He claimed that Mosir prefers to organize other events, did not really care about the facilities where motor players were training, or did not manage to remove the snow out of the pitch before a friendly game. There was also the other reason, much more private. Feo's partner, who was not given a better job in the club by the chairman, despite Feo's multiple requests. It ended up with a bunch of conferences over different issues around the club, one of which was meant to be a mutual one with Fe and Tomczyk. But Gonzalo decided not to turn up, claiming the pitch results speak for themselves. But then it turned out uh, he hit the chairman with a document tray and Pavel was sent to the hospital. Do you want to know the punishment for this? Suspended disqualification for a year. Th 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 that's it! That's literally it! Oh, and an apology that was issued a year later. This is how long the entire case took. And what's more is that the owner of the club, billionaire Zbigniew Jakubas, was actually somewhat defending Feo and did not even sack him. Tomczyk and Maciążek did leave the club days after the incident though. But Gonzalo didn't stop there. On July the same year, the news were revealed that the team manager and one of the assistants did not go to a pre-season camp because Feo called them some bad stuff. I'd say the sagas died down after that, until the time Feo left Motor, in March 2024. He actually resigned on his own accord, going to owner's room and saying something along the lines of I'm leaving because I cannot work with this. By this, he meant players the club had, suggesting they were not quality enough to work with Gonzalo. The plot twist? I accept your resignation, with just a slight reminder that you are the person who made the decision to sign those players, said Zbigniew Jakubas, owner of Motor Lublin. Now we're transitioning to Gonzalo's time in Legia, which is still going on when I'm recording the audio at least. While the first few months didn't bring in any massive scandals, it all broke out in the new season. The biggest talking point being Feo's behavior after the conference league qualifying game against the Danish side Brandby. A 3 to win away in the first leg and the 1-0 draw at home promoted Legia to the final qualifying round against Drita from Kosovo. But right after the final whistle, Gonzalo has decided that while celebrating, the best idea is to show middle fingers towards Brandby fans. About that, I don't really understand. Especially considering the fact that Brandby fans let Legia Ultras into their stadium in the first leg. They did that despite the Polish fans being banned from entering the away games. From most recent actions, Gonzalo for whatever reason keeps saying that his team played better than the opponents, despite the stats and the score sheet proving otherwise. There's much more Feo's actions we could talk about, but I only mentioned the most important ones. I'm looking at these and thinking... Is it truly the ambition? Is it just the frustration that comes out every now and then? As I said, Gonzalo is an actually talented coach. Obsessed with the details, getting results, great on set pieces, and if it all was down to a couple of f***s, I would probably say it's a normal part of football. But man, you're losing your nerves on a near daily basis. I think Feo has his last chance now in Polish football for a long time, at least. If he doesn't suddenly turn it around against Betis, which would be a surprise, and Jagiellonia, I think we're about to see another sacking in the league. There are already talks about a special clause in Feo's contract, unknown to me yet, and who would be the next coach? Likely from abroad. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know in the comments what do you think about Gonzalo, are his actions redeemable, or should he have been shown the doors earlier on, maybe in 2023, maybe even earlier? Is he able to turn Legia's situation around? Is it just a bit of a bad form and we just need to wait a bit more, give him a bit of time? Or is it just a result of the Portuguese coach being overrated? These are some of the questions, and if you enjoyed this video, you can hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll be really grateful for that. And if you're wondering what happened to Kostar Runjajic, he became a manager of Udinese and is doing wonders in Serie A.